Celestial blessings, this is Helen Demetriou. Now this video is going to be long, so you've been forewarned. I don't have a structure, I'm just going to go with it. It's about Christ and the Antichrist. Yes, there are many that won't agree with me and that is okay. What this is going to be based on is not just my intuition, but mostly on my my research for the past years, um, my use of comparative mythology. And I'm going to explain to you who the Christ is for those who do not know. First, I want to say is, if you're going to reject a religion because of the people that are in that religion, that is perfectly fine. Just do not insult the deity of that religion. And there'll be many of you that will say, well, we don't believe in that deity, but it doesn't mean that they don't exist. And usually you'll find through history, the deities of any religion has long existed. Like you can find the God of the, the Muslims, you can research it and find it, trace it back to Sumer and Babylon. And the same goes for the God of the um, Christian religion and also Jesus' incarnations prior to being Jesus. I also want to say that I've noticed that in the pagan community, it's like a game of Chinese whispers. If one person says something and they claim that it is a truth, then without even researching the background of it, other pagans will just parrot the same comment or the same phrase without spending their time to really go back and, and, and research whether this is a truth or not. Don't just take what people say as gospel. Do not even take what I say as a truth. I want you, those who are dedicated to their spiritual education and your devotion to the gods, to research everything that I say. Do not take what I say as 100% truth unless you find that it is true for you. I know there are many of you that rely on me for offering the truth that I've learnt through the books or through um, translations. Um, and I know that, you know, you use my work as a source, uh, of, of a, as a base for a, a, a solid foundation, but I still want you to please always go and research for yourself, okay? Okay, so let's go back to this Chinese whispers business. People don't research what it's about, okay? And we're talking about Christ now, okay? There are those that will say, well, you know, who is going to worship a zombie god? Oh, you know, they worship a zombie. Well, you know, look, you know, shall we just grow up a little bit now, okay? You know, if you're going to go in the realm of the gods and you're going to walk in the footsteps of the gods, it's time to mature and stop making silly comments that is not, it has no... um it does not reflect at all your knowledge, wisdom or intelligence. For the fact is there are many dying and resurrected gods throughout history. And those that are avid watchers of my videos know that I'm talking about Goddess Inanna, the God Osiris, the God Marduk, the God Mithras, Dionysus, Adonis. Uh, there are so many. Are they all zombies? Are they were the people worshipping a zombie? Think about it. Then we'll have the argument, well, Jesus was a prophet. He wasn't a god. I believe that Jesus existed, but he was a prophet, but he wasn't a god. Why is it more believable to believe in, in the, all the other stories than a, a man who incarnated, who was a Christ and manifested if he was a prophet, why would a prophet put himself to be killed and crucified? As usual, you'll find that the body is put into a cave and is resurrected by the goddess. With Jesus, it was Mary Magdalene. Now, this video is not here to support Jesus. It's not here to brainwash anybody. It's not here to... Um, I'm not 
vouching and saying you should all believe in Jesus I'm not doing that I just want to explain to you something that is very very important and you have to try if you can to put aside any of those negative feelings and experiences you've had with the church because we're not talking about the church now we're not even talking about religion okay Christ was not part of he he does not belong to any religion okay they created what they wanted to for the sake of manipulation we're talking about a God now you'll say well if he was a man how could he be a God well how could Osiris be killed how could Adonis be killed how could Marduk be killed if they're gods they're immortals right so how could they die and be resurrected think about it okay okay so Christ and the Antichrist who is Christ Christ is the son of God he's the son of one of the gods of the Elohim the Elohim are the Anunnaki how do we know this we go back to the text back to the tablets in Sumer and we learn about Marduk who is the the son of Enki and Enki is the god of the earth and of water you'll find him in the Greek pantheon they labeled him as Poseidon you'll find him in all of the pantheons so the story of Marduk was he slayed the dragon and by doing this he saved the gods and the head gods on earth which is Enki and his brother Enlil gave their attributes to Marduk and he became king god of the universe he became the shepherd of the gods okay so he's known as the savior he was also a sun god he was not the personification of the sun neither is Apollo Helios is a personification of the sun he became known one of his names was Amarutu which means the golden calf of the sun then we go through time and we can see that he's related to other deities that claim the same um, attributes that are also linked with the dragon that linked with being dragon slayers they're linked with being um, having the sun attributes as being a savior god who saved the gods and saved the people and it's the same thing that happened with Jesus they are manifestations of the Christ energy the consort of the Christ is the Sophia, is the Shakti, is the Shekinah. That is an energy. It is a female energy. So, the Christ is the is the masculine aspect of the all, the Creator, and the Shekinah, Sophia, Shekinah, Sophia, Sheki, Shekinah, is the female aspect energy of the all, the Creator and they manifest themselves as beings and that is why every so often in, in, in throughout history you'll have the same kind of gods the fertility son dying and resurrected God the Savior they're all connected they're all the same being and you'll find them if you research through all of the pantheons and always their consort is the goddess that is manifested from the energy of Sophia Shekinah um, Shakti and it is the goddess of Venus Aphrodite Inanna Ishtar Mary Magdalene Isis Hathor that's another video she's always Astarte she's always the the consort of the dying and the resurrected God now when we look on earth we need to ask ourselves what is it that we need most we need balance of both the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine everything on this earth is about balance and the yin and the yang everything is about duality and keeping that balance to keep harmony this is why it is so, it, this whole thing was 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 
all about Jesus because people knew that Jesus was a, was a manifestation of the divine masculine and the, the manifestation of the Christ which is an energy that is sent to earth when he is needed but he's always sent with his twin flame his consort who is the goddess energy and they are the two most important god and goddesses on earth listen i'm not saying out of every god and goddess on earth because they're the ones that have to bring the balance and you'll find it in all the stories he's a fertility god she's a fertility goddess they get together they create harmony they bring heaven to earth and this is the basis of their manifestations why they incarnated obviously they've incarnated as, as, as mortal gods to be able to kill them they have to be mortal if they, if you to understand my point so they come here and they manifest here as a god and goddess as a as a, in human form and they perform the heroes Hamos, their twin flames they work together and a good example is Jesus and Mary Magdalene those are the the, the most recent events or written word that we've had of when they manifested here who is the Antichrist let me explain now many people are not going to like this like the Christian viewers I have or even the new age viewers are not going to like what I'm going to say now you'll find for those of you that know the Bible that they talk about it Jesus says that he will he is the morning star the morning star will rise in everybody I can't find I don't have those passages at hand but you can find it if you google morning star Jesus we know that the morning star, the evening and the morning star, belongs to Venus, which is Inanna, who was also known as the morning and evening star. But so was Lucifer, because Lucifer was not the sun. He was not the personification of the sun, but he had the sun attributes. He comes from Venus. Now, Jesus talked about being the morning star. They spoke about him being the morning and evening star. Lucifer is the morning and evening star. He is the, the light giver, the light bringer. Lucifer is the one known to have the keys to the underworld. Lucifer has been demonized by the church because they're saying that Lucifer is Satan, Lucifer is the devil, Lucifer is evil, but Lucifer comes from Venus. And the reason why Lucifer fell to earth is because he descended just like all of us. We've all, we're all fallen because we all descended to earth to be incarnated as human beings. So Lucifer is Jesus. Lucifer is one of the archetypes of Christ. The Christ has many archetypes. He has the warrior archetype that slays the dragon. And he has the healer, the philosopher such as Jesus, who performs miracles and brings the dead back to life. There are two Christs. Well, there are two manifestations of the Christ. One of them is Lucifer and one of them is, is Jesus. Lucifer was manifested with a different name during the times of Jesus and he was probably known to be in those days Jesus's brother even though they may have not been related by blood so we have Lucifer is the Antichrist but so is Jesus the Antichrist why is Jesus the Antichrist because he's the anti-Christian because when he does come back he does reincarnate anyone that has used his name who is oppressed and murdered in his name are going to pay for what they've done he's not going to come back and kill all the pagans or all the Muslims or anyone that doesn't believe in him he's going to to, to deal with all those who have killed in his name who have murdered in his name who have hurt others in his name who is condemned in his name who is judged in his name 
not come back as Jesus. He's coming back as a manifestation of the Christ because that is what his higher self is, his root soul. So, I said that he's also the Antichrist. That is because when he does come back, he will destroy the church. <laughs> Which I'm very happy about because we all know that this is a fake, this is an organization that was created in order to enslave, to manipulate and to hurt others. But this also means that where Christ has the keys to life, he also has the keys to death. And it says in Revelations that the Antichrist has the keys to hell, which is the underworld, and who will open the underworld. Well, within the underworld, they have trapped the souls of the saints, of the goddess energies, and this is what is being released right now. He's also the devil. Why is he the devil? Because he is the one that people will have to face. Should they be murderers or a soul that just will not, um, will not understand what they have done, a soul that is damaged, that has been given so many chances and reincarnated so many times, and each time they've just done evil and bad things. Now, you're going to say you don't believe in a devil. When I say a devil, I'm trying to use a term that you can understand what I'm trying to say. He's not a devil. He's the judge. And this is my point. I'm, I'm trying to use the word devil so you can, you can try, an antichrist, so you can try and understand, you know what those terms mean. So I'm using those terms. But if I was to say another way, I would say, whether you've behaved, you'll be judged by him. And whether you've, you've not behaved, you'll be judged by him. It doesn't matter which way you go. You're going to meet the Christ energy wherever you go. Because he's the judge. Now people will say, oh, this is typical Christian uh, stuff. That you're trying to fear people. And this is why I turned away from Jesus. Because of all the fear mongering and all this. Look, let's again, let's be honest, shall we? Let's not pick and choose what we want to believe and what we want to condemn please refer back in all of the books regarding the gods and the goddesses how many times did Zeus punish the people how many times do you read that the people said oh we've had a bad earthquake the gods are unhappy with us they're punishing us come on stop stop looking for a scapegoat okay to to blame for for saying oh he's a jealous god how many gods were jealous tons of gods were jealous it's not just this this figure that they've created this title this false idol called yahweh there were there's many how many gods for example let's go back to the greek stories of poseidon who raped medusa in the temple of athena yet she got punished and got transformed into a gorgon Yet he, nothing happened to him. So in other words, they were rapists as well, yeah? And it's okay for them to have, be murderers and punishers and, and rapists. But it's not okay for this story. We don't accept this, but we accept the others. It's okay for other gods to do it, but not for Yahweh to do it. You have to, you have to stop this. You know, if you really want to find enlightenment, you have to stop, you have to stop being so so um so involved personally you can't condemn one god for doing something that your patron or matron god has done i know exactly what inanna has done in the past that she slaughtered lots of people you know but what do you i'm not going to lie about it i'm not going to say well that's okay oh good old inanna she's a powerful goddess she slaughtered and she did this oh she's brilliant but that yahweh and that jesus oh my god let's just like throw them away because of what they've done you know you can't be like this if you want enlightenment you have to step back and not take this personally you have to be neutral if you want to learn the mysteries and the truth I'm not telling you you must believe in Christ, even though he is a reality. I'm not telling you to believe in Yahweh, even though you've been taught a false idol of what Yahweh or who Yahweh is. Because we know 
the ones that have studied Yahweh was a title given to the god Enki and Enlil yeah and that title was then passed on to Marduk who is Jesus so Yahweh was just the same as Zeus you'll find him in all the pantheons he's the same God okay you've just been taught the false image that they wanted you to see because they wanted to take away the sacred feminine for when they took away the sacred feminine they were able to create imbalance not only in our consciousness but within that way we were more easily manipulated and easier to handle us okay so when you're rejecting Jesus you're rejecting Osiris you're rejecting Marduk you're rejecting Dionysus you're rejecting Adonis and many of you will say I don't believe that I believe that this God is a God in its own right if you believe that that's fine but just research okay you'll find it when you start to find this you're going to say to yourself I can't believe this this is amazing these gods they're real this is not just a story written by Homer or one of the other storytellers of old. This, these are beings that were here and they're incarnations of the Christ energy. Just look at your soul. Your soul has a higher self, okay? It, there is a root to your soul. And it's the same thing for you in your past lives. In each life you reincarnate, but you're still, it's still being projected from the, that one root source. So, this is who the Christ is. This is who the Antichrist is. The church tried to tell people, beware of the false prophet. Beware of the Antichrist that is going to come and lead you astray. Because they knew, one day, he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to be the Antichristian to them. And this is why they want people to be against the Antichrist so that they could protect themselves so that they would defend the church against this being who if they had the chance they would crucify all over again okay because this this elite this organization has been going on for thousands and thousands of years since Atlantis since Babylon since the split in the mystery schools of Babylon and there has always been the good fighting with the bad okay so this is why they've told you, us all the Antichrist is coming the Antichrist is going to do not believe the Antichrist this is exactly who the Antichrist is is actually Christ a manifestation of Christ that is coming back and they want you to be against it's just like the same thing they did with the Anunnaki all this rubbish about them being reptilians and them being bad and mind controllers they've done this so that you could turn away from the gods so that you reject the gods and that you would uh, defend earth supposedly against these gods that returned and this is another creation it's all to do with keeping their false reality safe and that making us believe in lies while they hold, hide the truth so this is who the Christ is. The Christ and and the his his consort is very very important to our earth. They're very important to our balance. We need both this male and female energy. We need these two manifestations of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine to unite. Now somebody asked me on they didn't ask me on Facebook they posted a, a post about um, about something and they asked why the um, the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul the Saint Sophia is, is dedicated to the Logos the Logos being the word the word being manifested manifested into flesh which in one case was Jesus why would the Hagia Sophia this church this cathedral be dedicated to the word the reason being was because if you read um, the gospel of Mary Magdalene you'll find that 
um, Jesus taught her many things in secret and when she was asked by Peter what did he tell you what was the things that Jesus taught to you but he didn't teach to us and Mary Magdalene says to Peter everything that is un is hidden I will reveal to you it was given to her to reveal to man so the logos is the word it is the male energy the goddess is the female energy and she is wisdom Sophia means wisdom Ayo Sophia the wisdom is dedicated to the logos if the logos is not spread by wisdom the Logos is useless and it's just male dominance and it is, it is hard and harsh and it doesn't settle within the hearts of people but it is forced upon people but when the goddess speaks it when wisdom speaks the word of God then this word is welcomed in the hearts of people and it brings balance now even if you look within the Hindu pantheons and their beliefs it also says that it is the goddess the Shakti energy which empowers the gods that without the energy of the goddess and her empowerment the gods have no power and this is exactly why Mary Magdalene was supposed to spread the word of God and when I'm saying God do not look at it in the Christian sense or in any religious sense I'm talking about the divine plan which is part of what the gods give to us which is uh, something that we all need to live by so without the wisdom without the goddess the male gods message to the world is useless if she's not the one who gives it then it, there is no point to it and as I said it is forced and it is patriarchal and it is it is in, it is harsh and it does not sit within the hearts of people it is the female the goddess that has to bring life to this word to this logos it is wisdom that has to teach it which is why Jesus taught Mary Magdalene many secret teachings in order for her to teach it that she was the one who was supposed to lead people and the thing is there were no there was no religion they were called the way they were they followed the way and the early followers of Jesus were part of the way it's like a Buddhist uh, the Buddhist beliefs because Jesus during the years from when he was 12 he went um, traveling he was initiated in the different mystery schools they have records of him being in Tibet being taught by monks and by Buddhists so you can see that Jesus was a teacher now in the New Testament was written in Greek okay and when the, the they translated the word disciple it doesn't mean disciple in Greek the disciples in Greek were called mathides which means students now Jesus basically what the way was was a mystery school and this is why some of the things that you are in the New Testament that Jesus allegedly said people don't understand and they have to study to understand the messages when he, what he was giving to his students what he was speaking what he was teaching to the people he was explaining to them what he meant but when he was speaking to his students he doesn't explain it is up to them for their enlightenment to discover the meaning of Jesus's teachings that is because he was an initiate he was a Christed master and though they were his students the females and the males and when they began this to hold these communions there was no church it was all outside in nature because they wanted to be one with nature because they knew they could find the energy of the Christ within nature as well as the energy of the Sophia they would sit in a ring in a circle they would talk about the lessons that Jesus had taught them they would share the bread they would share the wine and they would sit man and woman there was no 
no division between the females and males. Jesus even told his own students, especially Peter, do not treat her as a, as a woman, meaning do not treat her less than just because she's a woman and not a man. You treat her as equal. All these men and women are equal. And this is what he came to do. He came to bring equality. He came to bring back the sacred feminine. He came back to bring balance and harmony. And this is what the church doesn't want you to know. And they want you to hate him. They want you to despise him. Because they're controlling you. Because you're the ones who can set free this balance. You are the ones that can bring this truth. Because the others, the Christians, are all brainwashed. They don't understand the truth. They won't accept the truth. You see the fanatics on everybody's videos saying, you're going to hell. You're all going to burn in hell. Jesus saves is the only way. They, they know who they're projecting to. They, they, they enjoy the fact that those of us that have broken away and have awakened, we are the powerful ones because we're, we are aware and we're the ones that can bring about this change in the world. So they don't want you to follow Jesus. I'm not telling you you must follow Jesus, but they want you to hate Jesus. They want you to be against him. They want you to stay away from the holy books. And when I say holy books, I'm not just talking about the Bible. I'm talking about all the other scripts, the Gnostic texts, the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Nag Hammati Library. They want you to stay away from the truth. Because if you had the truth and you knew the truth, you'd be more powerful. And we could change this world and help everyone else to awaken. They want to segregate they want to keep it that way. They want this hate between Christians and pagans and Muslims. They want this. It's, this is working out fantastically for them. And I want you to sit and think about what I just said. You know? I want you to sit and realize that, you know what? This is true. I mean, they want those that are Christians to stay brainwashed and be their, their foot soldiers. And they want the ones that are awake to um, have... A problem with the Christians, like the Christians have a problem with the pagans. That way, there is no unity. And because we are more a goddess, okay, I'm not saying everyone follows a goddess, but we're very goddess orientated. By coming together, you connect the god and the goddess. Do you understand? The male and the female. Because paganism is, is very female, uh, a female path. I'm not saying completely there are gods. I'm not saying. But it is more feminine, whereas Christianity is more masculine. So if we all unite, not that we have to believe the same thing or become a Christian or anything, we're creating balance and we're united. So that is my talk so far, what's come to mind. I mean, there's, there's so much more to it. But that is what has come to mind to say in this video. It's a long, long video. And I know that those that are really truly dedicated to the spiritual education will have sat through 35 odd minutes of me speaking about Christ and the Antichrist and who is Lucifer. And it sort of touches also on the videos that were going around about whether you believe in Satan and whether they should be tolerated or accepted or whatever. But the end of the day is it's up to you if you want to follow a negative energy. I mean, if you follow a ne this is another video, but if you follow a negative energy, people say, well, they're not harming anyone, but they are because they're sending out frequencies into our consciousness, and this is harming everyone. Okay, this is why you have to watch your thoughts, think about everyone else. Is it hurting anybody? Is it hurting humanity as a whole, even though it's not involving anyone physically? So when people f say, oh, I follow Lucifer and they turned him into a devil, I think it's pretty funny because Lucifer is Christ. You just need to go and, just go and, um, just go and research it about the Gnostic Lucifer and you'll find that Lucifer is Christ. 
He's not the devil. You know, because I'm not talking about those that follow Lucifer as in Lucifer, the Roman God, the, sun, the, the light bearer. I'm talking about the ones that consider Lucifer to be the devil, to be like Satan, that are following him in this, um, this manifestation. <laughs> They're actually worshipping following Christ anyway. So, <laughs> thank you for watching. I love you very, very much. Bye-bye.